Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today, we're going to be discussing an incredibly scandalous topic, why Hermione should have been with Harry instead of Ron. For those of you who are primarily fans of the Harry Potter novels, or enjoy both the books and the movies, I imagine that this particular sentiment sparks outrage at the very mention of the idea. On the other hand, for all you movie loyalists out there, I'm fairly certain many of you are likely nodding your heads along in agreement. And it is for this exact reason that I'd like to further define today's topic, so that there is no confusion on the matter. That is, I only believe that Hermione should have been with Harry in the film adaptation of the Harry Potter series. Now, there are exactly three reasons for why I feel this way, and they all revolve around the liberties that were taken with Ron, Hermione, and Harry's characters when translating the books into films. As you may already be familiar with, in the past I've released a series of videos discussing the major character differences between these three best mates when translated from page to screen. If you're not familiar with them, I highly recommend you go check them out. They are three major differences between book and movie Hermione, four huge differences between movie and book Ron Weasley, and four huge differences about Harry movie watchers won't know. Essentially, in these videos I break down how both Hermione and Harry are made into near perfect versions of themselves, especially Hermione, whereas Ron is portrayed as a goofy, buffoon version of his book character. For Harry, the film seemed to have removed his wittier, more rebellious side, turning him into a hero with minimal flaws. In the case of Hermione and Ron, the writers simply seem to have taken away a lot of Ron's lines and important moments and given them to Hermione, degrading his character and enhancing hers. As I explain in the other videos, a large component of this may have been to simplify the source of information for the audience. That is, by giving Hermione all of the educational lines in the movies, viewers would clue in that when Hermione was talking, she was often explaining things about the Wizarding World. In my opinion, this was completely unnecessary, and really didn't make all that much sense. For example, while in the books, yes, Hermione was very intelligent when it came to book learning, it was Ron who was the source of information on how the wizarding world worked. This made great sense, since Ron, a pure blood wizard born into a magical family, had lived in this world his entire life. Hermione, on the other hand, was a muggle born witch, who had no idea that the wizarding world even existed until she received her letter of acceptance from Hogwarts. In any case, I digress. But that's just a little bit of backstory for you on some of the major differences between the book and film versions of these three main characters. So with all this in mind, I freely admit that I don't believe Hermione should have been with Harry in the novels. In fact, in the book series, Hermione and Ron are, well, actually near perfect for one another. They support one another when it counts and challenge each other in areas in which the other has shortcomings. Plus, Ron's a lot smarter in the books than he is in the films, so he really does keep up with Hermione's intelligence and actually rather balances her book smarts with his quick wit, humor, and valor. This very clearly is not the case in the movies. A great example of this can be found in one of the many differences between scenes in The Prisoner of Azkaban. This particular instance takes place in Professor Snape's potions class when he asks the third year students a question. In both the book and movie version, Hermione is extremely eager to respond to the question, since of course, she knows the answer. Snape, however, simply refuses to call on her, and so she shares the answer with the class without being asked. Here's how the rest of that scene plays out in the novel. That is the second time you've spoken out of turn, Miss Granger, said Snape coolly. Five more points from Gryffindor for being an insufferable know-it-all. Hermione went very red, put down her hand, and stared at the floor with her eyes full of tears. It was a mark of how much the class loathed Snape that they were all glaring at him, because every one of them had called Hermione a know-it-all at least once, and Ron, who told Hermione she was a know-it-all at least twice a week, said loudly, You asked us a question and she knows the answer. Why ask if you don't want to be told? In great contrast, when Hermione shares the answer to Snape's question out of turn in the movie, and Alan Rickman Snape reprimands her for being an insufferable know-it-all, do you remember what Rupert Grint's portrayal of Ron says? He's got a point, you know. 
I mean, no wonder movie lovers of the Harry Potter franchise don't think Ron deserves to be with this flawless and beautiful version of Hermione, as portrayed by Emma Watson. Not only is he not that bright, but he's also a complete jerk. Sadly, this sort of lost in translation adaptation from book to film seems to be quite common, as there are several other scenes in which the novels portray Ron as acting in Hermione's best interest or standing up for her or Harry, but in the movies he's either rude, silent, or the scene simply doesn't exist. Quite honestly, I don't envy the job the screenwriters were tasked with when writing all seven Harry Potter scripts. Cutting five to eight hundred page books down into two hour movies would be no easy task. But I simply don't agree with many of these script changes that fundamentally altered Ron's relationship with Hermione. And that's not to say anything about what it did to his friendship with Harry. I mean, are movie Ron and Harry even best friends? It doesn't really seem so, does it? There are also multiple scenarios that the films portray that never take place in the books, many of which make it seem like Hermione and Harry would be much better suited for one another than Hermione and Ron. For example, in the movie version of The Half-Blood Prince, we see Harry comforting a crying Hermione in one of the towers at Hogwarts. As you may recall, she's crying in the scene because she's upset that Ron is dating Lavender Brown, and while book Ron may have also dated Lavender Brown, we are never presented with the scene in which Hermione cries on Harry's shoulder. In fact, he seems to only notice that she's been crying in passing, with descriptions from the book sounding something more like this. Harry thought he heard a sob before the door slammed. There's also that scene at the end of The Half-Blood Prince, when all three friends are still at Hogwarts and Harry is sharing that he doesn't plan on returning to Hogwarts the following year and will instead be tracking down Voldemort's Horcruxes in an effort to defeat the Dark Lord once and for all. Here's how it all goes down in the book. We'll be there, Harry, said Ron. What? At your aunt and uncle's house, said Ron. And then we'll go with you wherever you're going. No, said Harry quickly. He hadn't counted on this. He had meant them to understand that he was undertaking the most dangerous journey alone. You said it once before, said Hermione quickly, that there was time to turn back if he wanted to. We've had time, haven't we? We're with you, whatever happens. By contrast, in the movies, Ron sits laughably far away from Hermione and Harry as the two H's plan their future together. Harry, I'm not coming back, Hermione. I've got to finish whatever Dumbledore started, and I don't know where that'll lead me, but I'll let you and Ron know where I am, when I can. Hermione, I've always admired your courage, Harry, but sometimes you can be really thick. You don't really think you're going to be able to find all those Horcruxes by yourself, do you? You need us, Harry. So, of course, with, uh, enhancements like this littered throughout the films, it seems just so obvious that Hermione should be with Harry, and certainly not that dolt, Ron. All in all, when it comes to the movies, I'm all for the Hermione-Harry ship, or as some fans like to call them, Harmony. Okay, maybe I wouldn't go quite that far. But with that, we've come to the end of another video. What did you think? Do you agree? Should movie Hermione and Harry have been together? Maybe you even think book Hermione and Harry should have been together. Or perhaps you believe that both film and novel Ron was the right match for Hermione. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, honestly, don't you two read?